Welcome to the Hold the Line podcast, where you get news, information, and connection to the community of gaming. Today we're going to discuss the idea of the tie between depression and gaming and what that entails, if anything. And here with me is Colby from Intel, speaking only for himself, of course, and this is Hold the Line. Okay, Colby. Welcome to the show. So, Hello. Uh, glad to see you. Yeah, good to see you. <laughs> now, this is a weird topic, and I asked you to be on and then just kind of like threw you into the shark bin. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate it extra. It wasn't like, hey, let's yeah. talk about gaming news of the week or like, let's talk about the Xbox One. It was like, hey, guess what? Depression <laughs> in gaming. Yeah, yeah. And especially, this is, this is a strange topic, especially for me, because I, uh, I mean, I've got like a sister who's bipolar but I mean me especially for like first-hand experience I don't think I've I've read a lot about depression I don't think I've ever been depressed so like it's yeah it's interesting to, to talk about I've done I've done I've done some research though so oh good well like I said you can be 50 percent like I have depression and anxiety <laughs> and I'm on uh, basically like anti-seizure pills so that if assholes are truly assholish my body doesn't actually show my revolution by spasming <laughs> So I'll, I'll be that fifty percent, and you be the fifty percent, like statistical, and that will work. Okay. Okay. I'm good. I'm so, all over it. The reason I want to do this topic is because there's a video going around, um, and it is not by the person I'm going to announce. I'm sorry, I don't remember who made the video, but it's a whole like documentary on people that are gamers. Kind of does like little excerpts of their life and like talk about you know, the games and how they're either helping them, not helping them, whatever. But there's an article um, on the Daily Dot by Maximilian Dichtel. You have to say like really German, Dichtel, <laughs> and he does. He's a blogger. He blogs about like this topic and uh, the correlation or if there is or is not one between the two. So that was interesting enough um, to, you know, have a discussion over. So let me just throw study numbers at you and see what you think. Okay. Poor, the poor Chinese, right? Like, they just can't... <laughs> they can't catch a break. <laughs> no. Okay, you live in China. It means you don't get, like, necessarily all the games, but we're going to study the crap out of you because we have a large population to use as a control. That's right. That's right. And and they don't even allow typical consoles over there usually. So that's yeah. It's in, yeah. That's a good place to start. <laughs> okay. Well, there's two studies. Um, the first one was, um, let's see, last fall, 1,000 healthy Chinese teenagers, uh, ages 13 to 18, were used in the study, and they were tested to see if they used the internet excessively. And no one knows how exactly they classified the word excessively. If okay, they did, yeah. they were twice as likely to be depressed nine months later. And the use of excessively included a lot of video games. And then a second study, um, 3,000 students of the 3rd, 4th, 7th, and 8th grades in Singapore uh, were studied to see those who played more video games um, two years later, those were that were more heavily gamers. Uh, 31 hours a week is what they consider heavily gamer, versus 19 for like normal quote unquote people. Um, okay. We're more likely to suffer from depression, anxiety, and social phobias, and their grades in school drop, and worse relationships with their parents. So those are the steady numbers. But the question is, I guess, the chicken egg thing. Like, which came first? Mm. Were they depressed and therefore they played video games, or did they play video games and then became depressed by the video games? So that's not conclusive. Yeah, yeah, and I mean that's that's those are interesting facts, especially I mean for one considering where they are and the the age range as well. Um, I, it'd be even more interesting to see if they're uh, you know adults in between ages. I don't know. Let's throw out thirty and forty, uh, and see if if those who if those uh, adults who game excessively are are more likely to be depressed or not. Um, it's very interesting. It, what 
I, I think it's a really, really big term, though, to say, you know, well, these people are more likely to be depressed if they play games excessively, especially since, you know, games entail a lot. So that's like saying, well, people who read books generally uh, try to drive red cars. <laughs> I, I feel like the, the correlation there is kind of weird at best. <laughs> if you want to get really narrow, I mean, you can. I mean, if if it was something more like, you know, the people who play... Online competitive shooters are more like are more likely to be depressed, or people who play single player only games by themselves are more likely to be well adjusted. I don't know. <laughs> single player only games always say uh, only alone or forever alone. I mean, what? Oh yeah, like? yeah. That's right. That's right. I mean, I that's generally the kind of gaming that I do. I mean, most of the time. Um, <laughs> really? Yeah. No. I mean, Confirms I play. Uh, for you? Yeah, that's right. I play. Um, <laughs> I play uh, I play a lot of console games by myself, but I also play like CS:GO online. I I've never the, the one category that I feel like is really big uh, player in this for positive or negative is MMOs. Mm. Um, because I've never like I've I've tried uh, I have tried so hard to get into MMOs, but I just there's something in my brain that just is not satisfying to do fetch quests for two hundred thousand hours. I can't I can't, <laughs> can't find... do that at work every day. Yeah, I can't. Since most people say that. Yep. I mean, it's uh, bring me a rock, and uh, I don't want to bring people rocks when I come home. So <laughs> it's, you know, it's MMOs are, are I'd, I'd be interested in that because there's, uh, I mean, there's interacting with people, right? But, right. you know, how interactive are you with those people? And the same thing with games like Counter Strike. Whenever you're interacting with people online, is that in like a positive sort of environment kind of way, or it, it, it's I don't know. That's what I'd be interested in because this is that's such a big term. I mean, was was it just everybody was just playing Angry Birds, like Super Mario Brothers two? Only Super Mario Brothers two. I could understand being really depressed about that because <laughs> that game is it's okay, but it's. Mm, no. In the section uh, with Tushar I'm going to have after this, there's a study saying like that the majority, ninety percent of gamers, cannot complete Mario one point one. Oh yeah, yeah. We're, we'll talk about that a little later. A little oh, later. that's interesting. And sad. Yeah. Um. Well, that's true. I mean, MMOs are kind of like their entire own category, and people have their own issues with MMOs. I mean, the the psychological issues regarding MMOs are more addiction. Like you hear that a lot. You know, talk mm -hmm, to MMOs, yeah. not necessarily like depression, which is interesting to me because I think the most people I know that are depressed and play games and find it like helpful. Um, are mm -hmm. the people that play MMOs. Like, that's the yeah. turn, the place you turn to, I guess. Yeah. Well, so the people that you know that play MMOs that sort of get um, get help out of it, are, are these people that play with other people? Or is it just, you know, being online and being with a community of strangers that's, you know, nice? I think both. Um, in the documentary that I saw, uh, several of the, the people being interviewed were talking about the fact that they probably wouldn't have contact with anyone except for the fact that they are playing M an MMO. And so that small, you know, group dynamic, even if it's just like a pug or strangers or something, is enough to make them feel, you know, slightly less alone. So mm -hmm. I, I can see that. I mean, personally, World of Warcraft is like that for me. Like, sometimes you just need to bring that, you know, 20 acorns back to the dude under the tree to feel some sense of accomplishment <laughs> you're like okay i know it's 20 acorns but i just feel good about myself right now yeah yeah i and i can understand that i actually just started playing cube world mm -hmm. and um it's multiplayer uh so me and my friend are sort of grinding through it but there's no the quests in there aren't really defined there's no acceptance criteria for them it's just there's a boss here you can kill him and then you kill him and then you level up and guess when you stop leveling up Never! You never stop leveling! And you never stop getting better gear. It's an infinite game. So that's That's strange. the addiction. But yeah, yeah. And it's it's really interesting to hear people, you know, talk about how satisfying MMOs are to them because, um, you know, it, it's... It, you, you you get a sense of accomplishment by completing something, I, th I think. I mean, that's that's something that, that I feel a lot, but I... Um, Whenever I do the same thing too much, I, I almost feel bad about doing it. Mm. So I think you know, that's why MMOs don't really work for me is because, you know, I played City of Heroes for probably a month. I got one, a one-month free trial with it, and I did not renew because, like, after that month, I was like, okay, I can fly around the city. That's good. <laughs> Yes. But I've gone into the same warehouse and killed the same frost enemy 15 times now, and... 
like I, I'm not really doing anything really productive here, so yeah. I just kind of stop. Um, so I, I mean, I don't know. Especially you know, whenever you start to try to link depression with things, the, those links are tenuous at best sometimes, um, because you can prove a lot of correlation, but you can't really prove causation. Yeah, because causation is, is so. Uh, I actually tried to do that one time. I tried to uh, do. Um, uh, my master's thesis, uh, no, sorry, not my honors thesis. I was going to do my honors thesis on um, on specific trends in television shows and how um, trending toward ridiculous sort of absurd TV and more toward reality TV or TV based, in fact, um, was a cyclical thing and um, how one would cause the other. So a oh, rise. Okay, the tie between the yeah. two. Yeah, so like a, uh, you know, imitation, what is it? It's innovation, imitation, saturation. So a new thing comes out, everybody loves it, everybody imitates it, then it's too much and nobody likes it. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, causation is really difficult to prove. And, I mean, even, if, I mean, if you take that example and try to pr uh, try to do, uh, you know, depression with it, you could even try probably linking, well, you know, more modern people, if they watch uh, more reality-based TV shows, they're more sad because they look at Honey Boo Boo and go, oh, no. You hope that that's the result, right? Yeah. You yeah. hope that that's how they feel, sad for for America and the representation happening, rather than entertained and amused and finding it charming, because that's the downfall of our country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's just so cute. <laughs> now. She's cute now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. I'm just, I'm kind of in that loop now. I have to get back. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry about that. that no, was, no, that was, all the place. that was cool. Um, there are actually video games that deal directly with depression, which I find interesting. Um, four of them that I read about that were kind of neat were Depre Depression Quest. Um, it's a text adventure, basically. Um, it's, it's like a series of vignettes where you have to make different decisions that are like classified as healthy or unhealthy. And some of them are just silly, like, um, you know, let's say you get home and you have options like get to work or watch t TV or go to bed, like some extreme obvious ones. There's clearly a correct answer here, but I guess, you know, there's normal people options thrown in there, which is what offends some people because they're kind of like, if you're depressed, you really don't have a normal person option. That's the point, yeah. you know? Um, but some people found it to be a laudable effort because at least it's addressing the issue. Um, yeah. Second one's called Allude. And this is supposed to like make you feel like what it's like to be in a depression. It's kind of a, a side scroller where you're this little like a kid and you run through this dark forest thing and you basically just have to keep running up hills and you'll fall down. If you fall down into this pit, it's like takes a really long time to get back up. And just oh. kind of frustrating the fact that you keep going up and down and like just supposed to make you feel like similar to that. Okay. Then another one called Actual Sunlight, which I played today. Ooh. You would love this game. You have to play this game. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, you know why? Okay. Do you ever put... Do you ever have, like, furniture that you buy that's really cheap? It's, like, you know, um, MDF furniture? Cause you oh, just... yeah. Well, I'm, my desk is on one right now. There. See? Like, around yeah. here, there's a, a store called Ikea. It's, like, a chain. Um, I think they're Swedish or something. Yeah, they are. Okay. I know, because every bit of furniture in the room that I'm in right now is from it's Ikea. It's from Ikea, yes! It's, I have yeah, a lot of that, of too. I have a shoe tree upstairs that I made from Ikea, and I use the word made loosely. And that's why this game is so funny, because here's... I was playing this today, and here's what it said. Like, if you look at the dresser and you examine it, here's what the guy will say to you. His name is Evan Winter, right? It says, assembly instructions, sawdust dresser. One, attempt to open the box, fail to do so, rip corrugated cardboard into pieces until dresser parts are exposed. Two, consider assistance of two-person assembly to be personal indictment of character and discrimination <laughs> towards sad loners. Mutter homophobic indignities about upper Scandinavians and their perfect little shoebox existences. <laughs> and three, figure out that assembly of dresser will, will require actual tools and not just syringe thin Allen key. Run mm -hmm. downstairs to a convenience store at, that thrives on overpriced sundries for emasculate condominium man children. Yep. So see, this game is fun just because of the little anecdotes. Yeah. I, I I always like games like that. Um, I just got done playing uh, the last game in the Rain Slick Precipice of Darkness series. Hmm. Let me tell you, the writer for Penny Arcade, he is a very clever man. Um, <laughs> like every every description that he writes is just all there. It's all so funny. Um, but yeah, I, I I really do enjoy games like that. That's pretty cool. So, and how how does that one deal with depression? 
Well, the guy is a writer, and his depressive stuff stems from the fact that he's overweight, and he just can't seem to get motivated, and he's alone, and just feels like, you know, a loser, I guess.